Hi there friends, welcome once again to Prophecy Update, where we tend to look at current events under the spotlight of ancient Bible prophecy. I'll be with you for the next few minutes, and before we get into today's video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share the video with your friends. And of course, please remember to ring the bell when you subscribe, and then you'll be notified when new videos come up. So let's kick off with some breaking news. Norway, Ireland and Spain have stated they are prepared to recognize a Palestinian state with or without Israel's involvement or even her approval. Now this comes as Israel moves into its final push into Rafah in Gaza to eliminate the stronghold of Hamas and hopefully rescue any Israeli hostages that may still be alive from the October the 7th Hamas attack on Israel when more than 200 Israelis and foreign nationals were taken prisoner and over 1,200 Israelis were butchered by Hamas terrorists. Israel responded to the latest news of these three European nations intent to recognize a Palestinian state with Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz, saying recognizing a Palestinian state is a prize for Hamas. While Hamas said it was an important step. Well, considering the Hamas charter that clearly states its intention is to destroy the state of Israel, the important step in their eyes is not a step towards a two-state solution with Israel and the Palestinians living peacefully side by side, but Hamas obviously sees it as a step toward the final destruction of Israel and either the death or the expulsion of every Jew living in the area. Let's not have any doubts about that. That is in the Hamas Charter, the destruction of the State of Israel. The Irish government also stated they firmly believe other nations will join them in the coming days to recognize a Palestinian state. There will be a UN meeting later in the year to vote on this very important and concerning issue. At the same time, the International Criminal Court said it will consider a call to arrest Prime Minister Netanyahu and Defence Minister Yoav Gallant. Norway went on as far to say as if such warrants are issued, they will enforce them and arrest Netanyahu and Gallant. Now, regarding the call for a two-state solution, folks, the Palestinians want the map to return to a pre-1967 six-day war position. And that would mean that in the event of a Middle East war, Israel would find itself in an impossible position with only nine miles in some areas between the border with Palestine in the east and the Mediterranean Sea behind them in the west. Now imagine facing an enemy coming against you with only nine miles between you and the sea to defend. That is an impossible defensive position when facing an army and a Palestinian population that has over the years Witness a Palestinian population growth of over five times since 1950. In 1950, there were one million Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Today, there are over five million, with the highest population growth in the world. And by the way, looking at that, does it sound to you like Israeli genocide? Today, the average age of a Palestinian is around 18 or 19. In Israel, the average age is around 29 years. So let me interject here with what I consider a major piece in the puzzle and why I made this title of the video. America is now pushing Israel to consider a normalization deal with Saudi Arabia. And that is something that could have huge prophetic implications for the Middle East and Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. The 
Temple Mount, of course, being a piece of real estate the Saudis have long been interested in gaining control of, seeing it is the third holiest site in Islam, and Saudi Arabia already are the custodians of Islam's other two holiest sites, Mecca and Medina. Also of interest for you to consider is this fact. Saudi Arabia, believe it or not, has now begun arresting anyone who attacks Israel online. Now get that, folks. That is unprecedented. This Arab nation, Saudi Arabia, has begun arresting anyone who attacks Israel online. Now that is really something to watch because that could lead to some very important prophetic events. So let's continue. The future possible announcement of a recognition of and support of a Palestinian is very real. And with Saudi Arabia in the future being in charge of the Temple Mount perhaps, and many believing the future Antichrist will come from that area, well, that would bring the verses I've been watching for a while come really into sharp focus. And those verses are from the prophet Zechariah, chapter 12 to 14, regarding the last days right before the return of the Messiah to the Mount of Olives, as prophesied in Zechariah and in Acts chapter 1 in the New Testament. That's two prophecies hundreds of years apart prophesying the very same event, an event I believe many of us alive now will witness in the days and the years ahead. And also please check out the book of Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. It says this, There was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. It goes on to say that they shall tread down the city for 42 months, which is three and a half years, the time of the great tribulation. The they is obviously Gentiles, non-Jews. So once the temple is built, could that outer area of the Temple Mount with the Dome of the Rock be given to Islam as it is now? And then they shall tread down Jerusalem with the Antichrist for three and a half years, the Great Tribulation. Are we looking at an Islamic invasion before the whole world joins in attacking Israel for Armageddon and the return of the Messiah. I leave that for your prayerful study because it really is very interesting. In those days it will be a time when the spiritually blind and demonically led world under the influence and leadership of Satan and his world leader at that time, the man the Bible calls the Antichrist, will finally come against Israel. Let's get this straight, folks. Satan hates Christians. He hates the Jewish people and the Jewish state. What you are witnessing today is not simply political, it is a major spiritual war with spiritual goals that have incredible prophetic results. And why is that? Well, because God has a plan for the Christians and a plan for the Jewish people and for Israel and Jerusalem. It is for his Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, to return rescue his followers, the true blood-bought Christians, save Israel and the Jewish people who, in those days around the return, when they are in dire need, will realize he is the true Messiah. They will repent and follow him against the coming Antichrist dictator. Then Jesus will return to the Mount of Olives, defeat the forces of evil and rule from the city of David, the city of of Jerusalem. That is God's plan. And it is Satan's plan 
to stop that happening and to place his false messiah, the Antichrist, in charge and stop Jesus returning. Well, that is a totally hopeless plan, yet one Satan, in his pride and in his arrogance, still believes he can pull off. And that, my friend, is what you now see unfolding before us now in an embryonic stage, yet it is fast forming into a final reality. A time the prophets and the apostles and the believers through the ages have seen in the hazy distance. And yet it is now on our very doorstep. Friends, it is time for Christians to get real with God. It is time for non-Christians to realise their time of rebellion is almost up. And it is time for turning to Christ for forgiveness and resolving to follow him from now on. And that door is slowly beginning to close. So do not delay. Let's get serious and follow Jesus. Seek him, seek his word, and find like-minded believers and friends buckle up, for the time is almost here. Maybe not tomorrow, but certainly in the next few years. So act now while you have time. If you're not a Christian, turn to Jesus Christ today. Every religion has a God of some kind. But our God, our Jesus, is the only one who came in human form, died to bear our punishment in our place if we follow him. He rose from the dead. He returned to heaven. He's even now preparing to return to earth and rule. He's not an alien. He is the very creator of all life. He exists beyond our time in eternity. No God-man has ever done that. The gods of the heathen are demons, the Bible says. That is a fact. And the facts, the facts of prophecy we now see before us are screaming to us. The time is shortening more than ever. The birth pangs Jesus warned would come in the last days, meaning the events prophesied for these times, are likened to birth pangs. And like birth pangs, the end time prophecies are speeding up one after the other. And they're going to result in his return and his rule. And then, and only then, will this world experience a planet of peace under his rule. May God speed the birth pangs and hasten the door of his return. Let me say again, come to Christ while you can. We're not promised tomorrow, friends. We are all a heartbeat away from eternity. And either heaven or hell, from which there is no return. So, which are you going to choose today, friend? Christ or Antichrist? Forgiveness or judgment? Heaven or hell? Please think on these things, because these are the days the ancient prophets spoke of, and you are the generation that is being allowed to witness them coming to pass in your lifetime. Friends, thanks again for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and share the video and ring that bell so you're notified when new videos come up. And if the Messiah does return to rescue us before I make another video, I'll see you there by his grace, by his mercy alone. I'll see you in the clouds. Thanks for watching. God bless. Bye-bye.